Hi everyone and welcome to this fun and whimsical layout. So I decided I was going to make some pinwheels and then see where the layout will take me. So I start by just using the pattern paper in the kits and cutting some 4x4, 3x3, 2x2 and 1x1 inch squares and then I did start off by drawing the lines and then after a bit I just cut them. So you just cut three quarters of the way in. You do not want to cut it so that it is triangles, but you want to cut it three quarters in so that you can fold it. You can see here I've zoomed in so you can see, especially the fold. So what you do is you just take one corner of that triangle cut and just fold it into the middle. So I don't crease the rolled edge. You sort of just, well you don't fold it I guess, you sort of crease it without a harsh fold as such so that it stays in spot but it doesn't it's not flat you can make them flat that's a different kind of look but I wanted that 3d look to it so I kept that little roll there on the fold so just using my glossy accents because it dries so quickly and is a strong hold but also because it's the smallest nozzle I've got in a bottle in my room at the moment so you can see there how good they look and then here is a whole bunch I had to physically tell myself to stop making pinwheels because you can see I made a hell of a lot but they were so fun and just um, they look so nice so I figured I'd use this photo and we'd go with a bit of a you know how fancy kind of title he's just drinking water from at the dentist <laughs> as you do put out your pinky so I thought I'd line them up like this and I actually do like this design and I think I'll go back and use the leftover pinwheels to make something like this because I didn't end up using this photo and also didn't end up using this style either. Instead I ripped out some pages of the yellow pages that I've got sitting on my texture and paper shelf and I pulled some that are, so you can see here this one's got colour on this side but on the other side it was all writing. So I'm just rolling from one corner in and then I get to a certain part where it's I feel it's long enough and then I just run some glossy accents down that edge, hold it together for a couple of seconds and then cut off the excess paper. Now that fold or that line that is left where you cut it, I figure I will glue that to the background so that you can't see that join. So you can see that it's so easy to do. I've already made quite a few of them here in the power of editing and I'm gonna work out exactly how I want them. I figured if I use these little rolls like um, sticks or you could use paper straws if you've got that in your collection I would use them to make pinwheel flowers and sort of like a little bunch of them, a bouquet of them as you might say and then that would be the feature of the layout so I'm just going to work out which ones I wanted whether I was going to use all the same color or if I was going to use these two designs together because there's a few different sizes it's nice to add that variety in there so that it looks um, quite cool to have the different sizes happening and then I add different patterns in and then I just spend a fair bit of time having a play with it looking at it go I'm in an R ring and no, I put this one on here and I basically get one that is just slightly different and hold it over and debate whether it needs to be changed or not. Like, it it was one of these last weekend when I was creating, I just had one of those weekends where nothing looked good. I just doubted myself ridiculous ridiculous amount and I just couldn't and it took me forever and getting frustrated and I just uh but I got there in the end I really love the way this has turned out and I really love the fact that I've got uh, 20 million pinwheels left to do to use I mean I don't have them to do I already did them anyway so I've gone to this point where I figured there are a bouquet of flowers all different colors and that I would use some ribbon to tie it all together to add that um, cohesiveness down so I pulled out my ribbon and then I'm going to get stuck to gluing these flowers together so that the pinwheels are, are attached to the straws. So just using glossy accents and just having to think about the position of how it's going to sit because I don't want them all sitting and covering each other. 
So just use some glossy accents and then I just use the strongest washi tape I have in my collection which is really more like plastic duct tape than washi and I don't know where, probably a cheap shop I would say that I got it from, maybe Office Works. So that's how I stick them all down, power of editing, they have all stuck down to the straws. So then I think that I could pull out some toothpicks and add some of these smaller pinwheels to that bouquet and I just sit them place them around to see if that looks appealing to me and it kind of the concept does but I just can't get the positioning I've left them there but I don't think I like where what's going on with them they sort of just feel a bit too jarring to the whole the rest of the bouquet so instead I work on the uh, the tie and tying it all together with this fancy ribbon that I want to have going on so I'm pulling out the white ribbon just from my stash and I actually would have preferred a wider white ribbon but I don't have any I would have liked at least double that width you know how you get those really wide ones instead I go around the bouquet twice and that's how I get my thickness but first I'm going to glue down the straws so that they're in position and I've got to work out how to tie it all together and not move and muck around. So I figured if I glued them here to the inside ribbon, then that's half my battle. I'm going to cut down the edges so that there is a bit of decoration going on with them. All different um, lengths so that they all look a bit more natural. And then... Just working out, making sure that they're all close together like a bouquet, but not so close that they're covering each other and not so far away that it takes up all the page and you can't, you miss things. So you can see here, I've doubled the ribbon over and that makes it look much more better just in terms of the dimensions. It needed that thickness with the big bold flowers that were happening. So I'm just going to cut them down. I do fishtail banner them at, after I glue it all down and put these ribbons on I work out which green I want and I go with this one just for a, an extra layer to the ribbon I was going to tie the green in a bow but like I said I was getting quite frustrated with my creating this weekend and I just couldn't like I fiddled with gluing this down and I cut out a hell of a lot because it just was so fiddly and it's, you know, it was getting on in the hours of creating a layout. And for me, I don't take hours to create a layout. I usually, 40 minutes is a, is a good amount of time for me to spend on a layout. So taking hours, I worked on it in the morning. I went out shopping and watched a movie for Mother's Day. And then I came back and created again. And it was becoming, you know, late for dinner. And it was just dragging on for me like I like the process and I really like the way it turned out but it was taking a long time so I've come back I've glued down the ribbon I've cut a different photo so this is a Mother's Day photo so I cut it by three by three and I'm trying to work out if I want a different if I want paper on the background and I really did want it but I couldn't work out which one I um which one would work so I go with the white because it really is what makes the colors and the patterns stand out using some enamel dots for the center of the flowers and that just looks really cool it covers over those messy joins as well in the middle but also makes them really pop out so I've come back and I've got a title here on some um, wax paper and then I'm going to add some layers behind my photo just so it stands out on the back it is a really dark photo and it was printed you know, back when I first, in 2006, when I first did, you know, six months of scrapbooking and then gave it up for, what, uh, at least 10 years, I would say. And then came back and brought all new style and new supplies and um, I just, I look at those layouts, I probably made maybe more, half a dozen to 10 maybe, and they're just... They don't feel like me. <laughs> they feel, they just remind me of the, um, 
inability to buy anything because I was a stay, you know, I was a, no, I wasn't a stay at home mum when I, my, my son was first born actually. I worked part time and that was um, more than my um, now husband worked. So it was very tight times. And scrapbooking was very different back then anyway. So anyway, well, that was a bit of a unnecessary tangent indeed. So I've layered it up. I've had a little frame there for a little pop of interest in those layers as well. And I'm just going to add this title here as well. But then I figured and all along I thought, oh, it needs some like mixed media behind it. But I really knew the way I was feeling. I couldn't do mixed media and like it in that kind of a... Um, structured tech, you know, technique and tech uh, situation. So instead, I came up with this much better idea actually that worked nicely. And I'm going to add a banner behind the um, that bottom half there. So that sort of grounds the bouquet and also then ties it all in with the photo and makes it all cohesive. I found so just going to I cut it straight with my. Uh, trimmer that needs a new blade so then I have to cut it again cut off those little scraggly bits anyway I lightly fold like I don't fold it I don't crease it I just slightly bend it so that I could cut the fishtail in the same edge and then I cut it down and I didn't cut it very straight in there end there but it doesn't matter because I'm going to add some of the yellow paper in another layer on top and that just sort of like borders uses the pink as a border and that just ties it in and makes it doesn't it's not obvious then that I've not perfected anything so just cutting it down because of course I didn't measure and I'm just going with the you know how does it look eyeballing kind of measuring do the same here bend it over and cut the banner that fishtail banner and then realize that I didn't cut it back enough so just cut some more and get there in the end so I'm just going to come back, I'm going to stick all this down and then we're going to work on the position of the title and then if I'm going to add any embellishments. So I do cut down, the good thing about putting your title on this kind of wax paper or plastic or anything like that is that you can position it where you want if you're not too sure and have a play around and work out exactly where things are going to go. I was going to put it over there, but I felt that it was going to be too heavy on the right side. And sometimes that design works really well. But because of the banners there, it needed to be a bit more even. So I've stuck that down. I'm using my glossy accents to stick down my pinwheel flower bouquet. Just simply <laughs> trying to work out where to put my hands when there was all this wet glue everywhere. And the other thing about positioning the bouquet in the middle is that I didn't have to cut any of the pinwheels down. I figured if it was overlapping the side, which I often like to do with things, uh, I would need to cut it down, but then I didn't want to risk the, the pinwheel looking a bit odd because part of it was cut down. So instead, it works much better to have it in the middle here. So I've gone with changing the title to Happy Mother's Day instead of Happy First Mum's Day. And I've put it there on the left-hand side. I'm working on a little pink ribbon bow there in the middle of the flower bouquet and that starts off a, a pretty cool cluster and then I'm going to add some of these little pinwheels here as the top cluster to the photo and that way they look a bit more grounded because like I said earlier I wanted to include them but I just wasn't liking how it worked so instead I pick it right colors and it's trying to make sure that the same patterns aren't right next to each other so I'm going to put two pinwheels up here, just using toothpicks is cute. And then I, I play with finding the right one for here so that the patterns aren't repeated because obviously I've used some of the papers to lay in my photo. And I just like that. It's sort of like the pinwheel is, you know, in the background but falling down a little bit at the same time. Adding some enamel dots to them so that just ties them into make sure that they are looking like the other flowers on the page and then I'm going to work on some other I did have to pull some green ones from my stash aqua green um, that's okay we all have a stash for that reason right so I'm just pulling it up to see what it looks like and what it needs and I did 
um, think about keeping that bow by itself but then I start building a cluster and I I think that's the way to go so add in a butterfly from the die cuts add in a flare up here just one that's got a pattern on it let's just bring some more of that light blue over to that area and then layering in a photo behind that pinwheel and the photo layers it just adds in that little bit of interest I like I often say I like when you first look at a layout and things pop out at you and then I like when you look at it a few more minutes moments later that you see different things popping up so I pulled that butterfly off and put on this flare instead that's got these lovely yellow flowers well one the big flower on there is yellow and I just found that those colors obviously go so well together because the collection is the same so just working out how to put a pinwheel down here on this cluster just making sure it's the right color and patterns so I'm going to go with this one I'm going to use my glossy accents just to stick it down thank goodness for glossy accents today because it has done me so well with this layout and then it's not going to be much more to it you can see my page is pretty much filling up that I couldn't add more if I wanted after a few tiny little pieces so I'm going to add some tiny words here from the sticker book I have this one that says smile I'm pretty sure it says that and then, so I'm just going to rip that fishtail off so I can put it under the pinwheel here and then I will put the other one that says amazing I'm pretty sure I'm just using my memory because the screen is a bit small and I cut off those fishtail banners just for a pop of different interest I don't always like things to look the same like that if there's you know fishtail banners going on I don't want to overdo it especially with the fishtail banner in the background I did some enamel dots to that cluster and also to the cluster near the photo on the right there just a few little up, um, big ones and small ones and then I'm going to add a doodly border just one line with my 0 0.0 no 0 0.3 pen or 0.3 pen is probably easy to say and then I do do a double line border around the edge here and then a just a thin line one on the yellow as well you can see here up in the close-ups and that is the end of the layout so I hope you've enjoyed this fun and whimsical and bit different layout and hopefully you try using some pinwheels and enjoying the kit this month I'll catch you next time bye guys